In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up bricks with webhooks. If you're watching this video, you're probably trying to figure this out. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I always try to avoid additional plugins as much as possible. And this is a great situation where you could go the route of adding an additional plugin and messing around with more advanced forms. But Bricks has a pretty great solution right out the box. Unfortunately, it does not support webhooks, but we can add that support with just one snippet of code. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So I have here a staging environment that we use and in the staging environment, you can see that we have a get in touch page. Now, this is what the back end of this looks like. And if we go into the form, we'll see that under actions, there is no webhooks option. There is a custom option and that's what we're going to tap into. Before getting any further in this tutorial, I do want to give credit to the person that kind of started this journey for a lot of bricks builders and that's Chris Castillo. I don't know this person personally, but they have here a public version of a function that does this. What we ended up doing is updating this function just slightly. That way we take into consideration checkboxes. Unfortunately, this version right here, what you would end up getting is just an array that's locked and you can't really do anything with it. And what we're doing is we're unfolding that array's information and then providing it to the webhook. That way you can actually do something with it. Here we have Zapier. We're gonna launch a new Zap over here. Here we have the form that we're gonna work with, and this is the public page that we're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a webhook. This is a premium service. You can use Make also or any of the others. We're gonna do here a catch hook. It's gonna to provide to us a snippet of code that we need. So we'll hit continue. And now we have this snippet of webhook that we need to call. And the code that we need, we're going to add into the child themes so i'm going to go ahead and go under appearance let me just show you the themes i have here for those who aren't familiar with this approach it's much better to use a child theme if you can what the child theme allows you to do is to not override your functions.php so any custom settings that you're applying to your theme won't be overwritten whenever you're updating your theme so in this case we're updating the parent but the child theme, which has all of our custom work, is not gonna get overwritten. So I'm gonna go into the active child theme here, into the theme file editor, say that I understand, go into the functions.php, and we're going to go down a few lines and paste the snippet of code that I will provide in the description below. And all you need to do is update this webhook right here from your side. So in my case, that's this guy right here. And the second thing you need to do is update the form ID. That way, once this function is called, the form that you're working on that you want to call the webhook with is going to fire off. So in order for that to happen, you just need to go over here to your site, to the form that you want to call the webhook with and inspect the form and get the form ID. So it shows up a few times here. Again, make sure to go to the form element and not something inside or outside. You want the form ID. So here it comes up and here it comes up again. I'm going to copy this form ID, go back to my function and make sure that this if statement matches this form ID. Now, this is the additional code that we added to unroll the data within the array. So if we go to our site and go to get in touch, you'll see here that we have these check marks that I was telling you about. And if I inspect these check marks, you'll see that they are an array, these brackets. So that's this form field right here. And you would have to update it on your side so that way it matches over here. Now, again, you need to do this for every form that you're working on within the function. You don't want multiple functions. All you really need is to have multiple if statements, one corresponding for each form. And once you do this one time, you're done. So in this case, we've updated the form ID. We don't need to use this. So I'm not going to have this even in the code. I'm going to comment it out for now and we're pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna hit update. And one more thing that's worth mentioning is that this is adding a custom action. So we'll see this play out if we go to our page that we're working on, which is the get in touch, edit with bricks. And in this form, what we want to do now is under the actions, we don't need an email anymore. We're gonna do a bunch of stuff, but here we have the custom 
action that we wanted. So I'm gonna hit save. And once I go to the public side of this page and hit refresh, test email at gmail.com, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. This is a test and hit send. And it looks like everything is working, but let's actually see the data coming on the other side. So if I hit test trigger, here we go. So I got all the information that I need to now start working with this form and do something else. So in this case, I could add maybe a Slack integration or email or whatever it is that I want to do. That way I can actually work with this data, manipulate it, do what I want with it. So that's all you need to do. Again, to go back for a sec and just explain what's going on, we have that function that we added the custom code that provided us this custom action right here. Once we select it, everything is good to go. And every time this form with the field that we defined in the function right here. So every time there is a match, this section right here is going to run. And you can see where this if statement is ending because the bracket right here that's opening this if statement, when you are next to it, it'll highlight the end. So this is pretty much running every time this form is called. So the beauty of going this route is that your builds remain lean and mean. No additional plugins, no additional third-party services. We're taking the code within our WordPress functionality already. There's no need to install anything else calling a webhook and then manipulating the data and doing whatever we want to do with that data. You can throw it into Google Sheets. You can do whatever you want with it. So that's it. If this video was helpful at all for you, please give it a thumbs up below. And if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe. That way future videos can show up in your YouTube feed. I'm going to link to two videos over here. One is going to be all about bricks and the other one is going to help you find new clients if you're just launching an agency or looking to get creative with your marketing tactics. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.